welcome to our simple guide to Ambleside and Waterhead. In this short guide you'll find everything you need to know about visiting this lovely Lake District town. Like how easy is it to get here? How easy is it to park? And can you get here by public transport? Plus we'll reveal what you'll find when you wander around town. As well as covering the main tourist attractions, we'll also answer the simple basic questions. Like is there somewhere where the kids can let off steam? Is there a cinema or theatre? Or are the streets just full of gift shops? We'll even tell you about local amenities such as churches, medical services for both people and pets, plus whether there's a post office or bank. So stick around for the next 10 minutes or so and enjoy our simple guide to Ambleside and Waterhead. Ambleside is at the northern end of Windermere, English's largest natural lake. Its position makes it a bit of a transport hub. Unlike near neighbours Windermere and Bowness, there's no lake in the way. So you can reach all parts of the region with ease. The main A591 arterial route through the lakes and up to Keswick and beyond runs through the town. You go west on the A593 to reach Langdale, Coniston and beyond, or take the easy route southwest to reach Hawkshead and the Sauries. Ambleside is on the southern side of Kirkstone Pass, with a wonderful road named the Struggle linking the town with all the joys of Oldswater and the northeastern fells. Wherever you are heading, fuel stations are in short supply in the Lake District. Luckily, Ambleside has one, so you can fill up before you head out into the hills. For those visiting by car, there is a reasonable amount of time-limited free parking in the town. And if you want to stay longer, there are no fewer than seven car parks. Buses run to Ambleside from Windermere and Bowness, Grasmere, Keswick, Coniston, Hawkshead and the Langdale Valley. There's even a fun bus to take you to the boats. During the summer months, there are five services an hour linking Ambleside with Windermere and Bowness and Grasmere so you won't have long to wait. Just under a mile from the town centre are the lake piers at Waterhead. From where, depending upon the time of year, you can take a leisurely cruise down the lake to Bonus, Lakeside, Rockhole or Ray Castle. If you are not in cruising mood, you can go all do it yourself by hiring a boat of your own. Those who prefer to stay on dry land might fancy the short stroll to Borrens Park, a small area of parkland beside the shore of the lake. There is no children's play area here, but there is plenty of space for them to run around whilst you relax and enjoy the views. Just beyond Borrens Park, are the remains of Galava Roman Fort. The Romans established their fort on the northern shores of Windermere a little over 1900 years ago, and the remains can be seen for free. Towards the end of the 1st century AD, a small timber fort was built here to house a garrison of 200 men. Early in the 2nd century AD, the fort was rebuilt in stone on a raised platform, which is still visible. It was larger to house a cohort of 500 infantrymen. If you want to pay a visit, you should note that there is no parking adjacent to the field. Luckily, there is a large car park at Waterhead. A short distance from Waterhead, in the direction of Windermere, is the National Trust-owned Stagshaw Gardens. If rhododendrons, azaleas and ericaceous trees and shrubs are your thing, 
then this eight acre woodland garden originally created by just one man will be well worth a visit. On the hillside above the gardens is Skelgill Wood, a must visit in spring for its displays of bluebells. The Victorian viewing station of Jenkins Crag can be found at the top end of the woodland, although nowadays the view is obscured somewhat by the tree growth. If you want to visit it, the track through Skelgill Woods is not the smoothest you'll ever walk along, so good stout shoes should be worn. Back in town, there's plenty to keep everyone happy. From a crazy golf and pitch and park course to a good sized park with what my grandchildren proudly proclaim is the best play park in the area. There's also plenty of room to stretch your legs, to enjoy the sights, sounds, and hidden wildlife in this gem of a public park. Back in town, there are three small cinemas, cafes, restaurants and tea rooms to suit every palate, and a wide variety of shops to enjoy browsing around. There's even a small market on Wednesdays. Throughout the town, there's an abundance of outdoor adventure emporiums. There's a good reason for this. The town is surrounded by mountains, with a couple of the region's favourite mountain walks starting here. Top of the list has to be the Fairfield Horseshoe, which features nine Wainwright summits in a 10 mile ridge walk with fabulous views all the way. If something a little lower floats your boat, then Loughrig might be the perfect solution. It stands between Ambleside and Grasmere, and what it lacks in height, it more than makes up for with magnificent views. Wands Fell overlooks the town to the east, and although it's a steep climb up to Wands Fell Pike, again the views never disappoint. The walk over Wands Fell Pike and down into the Troutbeck Valley is one of my favourites. For those who want something a little less demanding, the short walk from the centre of the village up to Stockgill Force, a spectacular 70-foot waterfall, is a popular option, especially after a period of rain. It's ideal for families and non fell walkers. Once you reach the falls, there's a safe viewpoint from which to view them as well as a bridge that goes over the stream at the top of the cascade. The waterfall is part of Stockgill Beck, which runs through the town and is linked to its history. 400 years ago, Ambleside was a mill town, with a number of mills being driven by the power of the water. As a reminder, a replica water wheel stands on the northern bank, close to the centre of town. A little further downstream is Ambleside's most famous building, the Old Bridge House. It dates back to the 17th century and was built as a summer house and apple store. That's a place to store apples and not somewhere to buy an iPhone. It was positioned over the river in order to avoid paying land tax. A short distance from the bridge house is the Armit Museum, which houses a collection of books, manuscripts, watercolours, archaeological remains, geological specimens, everything Ambleside, in fact, from Roman remains to original paintings by the children's author Beatrix Potter. Next door is the Ambleside campus of the University of Cumbria. It occupies the site of the former Charlotte Mason College, 
so has a history of higher education dating back well over a hundred years. At the other end of town is this interesting building. It brings a whole new meaning to moving house. Most people simply pack up their things and move, but the artist Alfred Heaton Cooper did it the other way around. The house was built in Norway, and when he wanted to move to England, he had the building removed piece by piece and reassembled in Coniston to use as a gallery and art studio. In 1912, it was moved a second time to its current position when the artist and his family moved to Ambleside. Next door to the log house is Hayes Garden World. Nowadays, this is seen as just another large garden centre, but Hayes has a long history and was on this site long before garden centres became popular in the 1960s. It may have a large garden centre, but Ambleside doesn't have a large supermarket. The nearest one is Booth's store in Windermere. It does have some smaller food shops, including a Tesco Express, Budgeons and the Co-op, as well as a number of independent specialist food shops. It also has two chemist shops, a large boot store and an independent chemist. The post office is in the middle of town and always worth a browse. Unfortunately though, there's no bank. The doctor's surgery is situated close to the university. A vet is also situated in the town on Church Street, just opposite where Mr Wordsworth once had an office. The main church is St Mary's. It stands close to the centre of town, adjacent to the local park. Next door to the church is the parish centre, where Ambleside Methodist Church meets on Sunday mornings. There's also a Catholic church on Wandsfell Road, and the Hope Church in the Kelswick Centre. So there you have it, my simple guide to Ambleside. I hope that you found it useful. If you did, you can always subscribe to the channel. Until next time, happy wandering.